everyone, welcome to my channel. Or if you're new here, then welcome. My name is Mika, and I know I look a little different. I don't have my braids in, child. So we just have to just deal with the down until we can get it done next week. So in today's video, we're going to talk about um, how I was able to utilize manifestation along with data analytics in order to obtain everything that I have. Um, so I know that your time is valuable. Timestamps are down below. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. As you go, guys know, back in 2013, me and my two children, we were actually homeless. And I, like I said before, it's not that kind of homeless where you're sleeping on somebody's couch. It was that homeless where you were actually sleeping in your car, kind of homeless. And, and just to address the people yet again, no, I was not able to move in with my mother. My mother did not have a house. To this day, my mother still doesn't have a house. My mother drove trucks for a living. My father had passed away. My brother lived with, my brother was in the military. My sister was living paycheck to paycheck on her own, so she couldn't afford plus on top of that me and my sister were not staying in the same city so going home was not an option I could not sleep on my friend's couch because I couldn't tell them how long I was going to be on their couch and things like that and like I said uh, in the last video I needed something that only God could bring me out of we slept in we were homeless for nine months and there were plenty of nights where we slept in our car we slept in shelters and things like that that just depends on if i were able to get off work in time in order for us to go stay in the shelter um but i can remember this one particular day where when the day we became homeless and of course no i did not go to court because i had to go to work um but they called me while I was at work and told me I had until five o'clock to move my stuff out or they all, everything was going to be out on the street. And we got home and I remember giving them each one, even my two year old, because at the time I had a two year old and an eight year old. And I gave my each one of them a bag and I told them, I said, listen, this is a trash bag and I want you to fill up as many clothes as you possibly can in each one of these bags. Um, but you can only take one toy. Everything else has to stay. We could only, only, only what we can fill up in our bags is what we can take. And it was hard to sit there and watch my children not be able to have their toys, to tell them that we have to leave everything behind. Even to tell a two-year-old that you cannot bring your toys. You can find one toy that you like and bring it, but everything else has to stay. And it was very difficult and hard for me to be able to tell that to my two-year-old and my eight-year-old. And I remember because when we left, right before we ended up leaving out of the apartment, I looked at both of my kids right before we got ready to walk out. And I told my kids, when, not if, when we get out of this, with the grace of God, I'm going to make sure that this, does nev this never happens again. And then I allowed them to go to the car and then I stayed behind and I began to cry. And I just said, God, if you just get me out of this, because to be able to sit there and tell my kids that we have nowhere to sleep tonight is crazy. And I'm scared because I'm like 29, 28 years old, and I'm scared because I have, <laughs> I have nowhere to go. You see what I'm saying? I have nowhere to go and we're sleeping in our car tonight. I'm calling my mom and I'm just like, mama, I'm just, and so I told my mom, I said, mama, I'm tired. I'm just, I am so tired. And she goes, you ain't tired. And don't you just hate when people try to tell you how you feel? And I said, mama, I am, please. I said, why do you keep doing it? Why do you say that I am tired? And she says, no, sweetheart, you're not tired. She says, because if you were tired, you would do something. You would. You would do something if you were tired. She said, you just tired. You ain't sick and tired. You're just tired. She said, when you get tired of being sick and tired, then you'll do something. So fast forward to that. And so God did end up bringing us out of that. Like we ended up coming out of that, out of our homeless phase. And we ended up moving into an apartment. Um, and we stayed in a second chance apartment because, of course, I got evicted. So I had really bad rental history. <laughs> so we ended up staying in like a second chance apartment. And those were like the worst apartments ever. They was in a really rough neighborhood. And so I could not allow my baby boy to go outside and play. So immediately I started applying for other jobs in the insurance sector. I was already in subrogation if any of you guys know what subrogation is um and so I was only making like $26,000 a year in subro and that's when I became
became an insurance adjuster. And once I became an insurance adjuster, I went from making $26,000 to now making $40,000 a year. And so um, after that, we ended up moving out of those apartments into, and I moved this into a house, um, but it was a rental house. And I was paying like $900 a month. The house was only like a thousand square feet. Um, I put, if I can find a picture of the house, I'll put it right here for you. It came with a front yard, backyard. We stayed in a, and we stayed in a cul-de-sac and it was great. And again, it was only like $900 a month. Once I started making like $40,000 a year, I no longer could afford, I no longer was eligible for food stamps. And so they pay you just enough to struggle. My first step in incorporating a manifestation was me creating a vision board and I framed it and I'm gonna put it right here for you so this was my very first vision board that I ever created and I put it right above my bed and then so I put it right above my bed and I that way I saw it every day I saw it every night it was very visual for me and I that gave me some things for me to strive to work towards to make a better life for me and my kids when I was making that vision board I told myself, I, I remember making it sitting in my um, sitting in my bedroom. I remember making that vision board and I kept saying to myself that I'm going to have a house that I'm going to be able to afford and that I'm going to buy on my own and that I am going to have a car, a car that I can drive and pay a car note for. I am going to be able to pay all my bills without anything getting cut off and I'm going to do all of this stuff. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. I was like, okay. So this one particular night, I did, went back onto the website for boot, for the boot camp again for Colberry, and I just started looking up some few things and everything. And around this time, it was almost February, and it was almost time for tax return. And I knew that I was going to get back a good substantial amount of money. And um, back then, girl, I was getting like, girl, back then I was getting like eight, ten thousand. Girl, that'd be about what I owe now. <laughs> Trust you people who try to get in the dead this world. Trust me, the more money you make, Uncle Sam comes for you. Okay. <laughs> uh, they were having an open house. So I went to the open house, get more information about it. And then I just said, you know what? I'm going to do it. Enrolled in the program. When there were times where it was hard and it was tough and it was rough and I wanted to quit. But I had to stick it through. I had to. I had, Failing and quitting or not completing this program was not an option because I didn't already spent the money because I was determined to make sure that I make that I was determined to change things and my friend had already boosted it up telling me how much money you could possibly make and, and even though in the back of my mind I kept saying well things like that just don't happen to me things like that just don't just don't even though I'm manifesting this but it was still there was still the small little doubt in my mind that yeah this probably won't happen this I probably won't get a job in this I probably have to go back to and you know probably be still stuck in insurance or whatever I don't know and once I enrolled in the program everything changed so I remember when I got my very first job offer oh my god girl I could not believe it like I was like I got the job Sir, somebody lying <laughs> Somebody lying, girl. You lie. But I got the job and I cried. I cried. And I remember going to my kids and I ended up taking my kids out to dinner that night. And I told them, I sat them down. I sat them down and I said, things are going to change. Things are going to go up from here. I got my first paycheck. So I did create a video about that titled my first paycheck what it was like but i'm not gonna lie to you for that first year i stayed in my same home once my lease was up i moved from that small house to another house but it was probably like 400 square feet bigger it was not that much at all and at the time the more the rent was like fourteen hundred dollars a month i could afford fourteen hundred dollars a month based on the money that i was getting as a data analyst working for that fortune 500 company and so but after that i stayed put I pretty much the first year I just paid off all my debt. That was the very first thing I did. I paid the school off and I stayed put. I drove the same car. I stayed in the same house. I paid off all my debt. I paid off all my credit cards, all that that all that didn't get shut off. And then so I paid off all my credit cards that were completely maxed out. I just pulled my credit report, found out some stuff that, that was gonna help me get my credit score up, and I just paid off my debt. Okay, now I'm looking to basically invest more money i want my money to work for me 
And so my mentor, his name is Ali, he's the same age as me, we graduated the same year and all this, and he's already a millionaire, and here I am, just now making 96, and he is already a millionaire, driving, living in the six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar house, and driving a Maserati, and all this other stuff, and I'm like, you're the same age as me, how is this possible, and we're in the same field, you know? <laughs> So, but he was like, I invest my money. I invest my money. I own real estate. And so I was like, huh, interesting. So then after that, I started purchasing books. And that's one thing about me. Like, I love to read self-help books. I love to read books that's going to give me knowledge. I don't like novels. I don't know why I don't. I don't like to read novels. But I will read books that will give me knowledge, that will give me information. And so I started reading books. I started ordering books about, about wholesaling, about real estate, investing, and things like that. I ended up going on YouTube, and um, I was watching this guy named Maximilian, and he was always talking about... Um, about wholesaling and all of that so I decided to do that and I jumped into that and I got my first capital and I ended up purchasing my very first building it was a struggle girl in the beginning <laughs> It was a struggle in the beginning. Um, and then I also was watching this other guy. His name was, I, I ordered his book. His name was, they called him the 9 to 5 millionaire. And he was a police officer who basically became a millionaire as a police officer. And so I started, I got his book, I got his workbook. And he taught me how to basically be able to create me some a passive income while working a nine to five and so then I was like perfect and then once I ended up getting my very first building and my very first commercial real estate then that's when I decided to reward myself and I purchased my very first car but I ended up buying our Mercedes so once I got into the data analytics world I ended up being able to you know invest my money into commercial real estate I was able to work from home working remote um, so what I want to do is now I want to basically have a home of my own so then at that time I decided to go ahead and then that's when I purchased my own home and so I ended up building a home from scratch I love the flexibility I love the fact that I do have downtime you love I love the fact that I can come and go as I please um and and I just and I love it I love the freedom I love the flexibility I love the work-life balance that comes with being a data analyst and you too can have that so I know there's someone out there watching this video and a lot of you guys who are on this channel who basically are saying I'm an inspiring data analyst and all this stuff and that's great but what I don't want you guys to end up doing is having what they call analysis paralysis I don't want you to feel like you have to do one you have to read one more book or you have to look at one more video or you got to take one more class before you can leave my thing is is that your life is whatever you make it out to be but it's not going to happen unless you take the leap jump into it just start i know a few people that have already started to go into the boot camp because they saw my video and i praise you for that and i applaud you for that so good job for doing that my thing is, is that i love the fact that they took that initiative they they decided to make a change and that is what we're going to talk about in this series i want to make sure that you guys start that you guys do it and that you move and that you actually make it happen but nothing is going to happen unless you make it happen life is going to happen stop saying well I need to wait until this happens or you know I, I started but then I had to stop because this happened life is not going to stop life in, and I promise you it's not so you can't stop every time life happens you have to push through it and you just do so I don't want to see any more excuses on why you have it and I know a lot of people say well I got imposter syndrome you belong in this field we need the help we need more data analysts out here in this field and we're waiting on you but you got to make the move like what is stopping you from doing it you can't say well I don't have no money there are plenty of free resources out here there is a guy that's on here on YouTube and I have to find his channel he has the full boot camp data analyst boot camp online and it's free you can't sit there and say, well, I don't really know what all the tools that I need. I created a whole video, boop, right here. These are the three tools you need. As long as you know these three, you're good to go. You say, well, I don't know how to start. Boop, I created a roadmap for you. Well, I need to create a portfolio. Got a video for you on creating how to create your portfolio. But I also need to create a resume. I got a resume for you right here, along with the template that tells you exactly how to. So stop coming up with excuses on why you haven't started. You can do the work. You can actually do this job. You just got to show yourself. You got to prove to yourself how bad you want it.
Because like my mother said, you ain't sick and tired yet. My thing is, is that I know how every year everybody comes into the new year. It's the new year. It's new year, new me. But we're not going to do that. We're not going to wait until 2026. Every month brings a brand new opportunity for you. Every week, every day brings a brand new opportunity. And this is the one thing about me. I know there's a lot of people out there that um, I know something like for me, I used to be a huge procrastinator. I went to a conference one time and they were talking and this stuck with me out of everything that that was said. And the lady said, procrastination is you having the audacity to think that tomorrow is promised. Wake up every day with the intention. Wake up every day wanting to do something different. Okay, so I'm here to tell you, listen, I know a lot of people are saying, I'm tired of living paycheck to paycheck. Well, honey, you do have a way out. And you do. Stop choosing to be broke and choose an option for financial freedom, especially when that is an option. What other excuses do you have? All right, so that is all that I have for today. Um, I appreciate you guys so much for watching. I really do hope that this will motivate you to get started, or at least that. Um, I have, we're gonna create more videos within the series to make sure that you guys start. Um, we're not gonna wait until 2026. We're going to start now, and we're gonna keep pushing. We're gonna keep moving. Okay, um, so I thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please post your um, questions down in the comments. I'll try to answer as many as I can. Until the next video, I will see you next time. Bye.